My name is Sasha Dugdale, and it's a real privilege to be able to talk to you about Boimiti Boimiti, which is uh, the Russian title of Maria Stepanova's book, In Memory of Memory. In Memory of Memory opens when the narrator um, has a death in the family, the death of an aunt, and inherits a great deal of paper, photographs, materials, which she brings to her own house and thinks that at some point she will sit down and work through and um, understand the life of her aunt better. But her aunt's life pr proves to be quite elusive, like many of the lives of our relatives when they've gone and all that's left is photographs and perhaps diaries. There's something about the essential nature of their life which just doesn't survive. It kind of trickles through our fingers. We can't hold it. That's the beginning of Maria Stepanova's musing on history and memory and what the dead mean to us, how we can capture them, what is always lost and what goes with the dead. And she brings to this discussion um, a wonderful assortment of artists and poets, writers such as Sebald, Mandelstam, um, artists such as Francesca Woodman and Rembrandt and Joseph Cornell. And she looks at each um, in, I suppose, in with the filter of how do they capture, how do they restore the dead? What's their relationship with the dead? and memory. Maria starts from the, I suppose, fairly straightforward idea of a family history or a family memoir that she had always wanted to write about her family. And as soon as she starts to think about this project, again, like the life of her aunt Galia, it seems to slip through her fingers um, and become incredibly elusive. There's a really wonderful small anecdote she tells towards the beginning of a book about a visit she makes to her paternal um, grand great grandfather's house. And she travels to the town where it is. She thinks she's found the house where he lived. She goes to visit it. It feels like her house. It feels like she's coming home. And she, she touches the walls. She has all these memories. Um, she feels as if she really belongs there. She goes back to Moscow only to discover a little later that in fact her family lived in a completely different house. This was just simply a red herring and all those feelings that she'd had, those kind of atavistic feelings, they, they meant nothing at all. And in some ways that anecdote really sums up the book. It's um, the search for the past, the search for history is all about the search and not the finding. It's all about the process of coming to terms with what's happened before us. And it raises all sorts of moral and ethical questions about how we deal with memory, how we deal with the dead in a post-religious um, landscape. What's really interesting to me as a writer, as a Russianist, as someone who spent a, a great deal of time in Russia and translating Russian literature, is the way in which this book is an international book. It starts with a family history based in the Soviet Union, based in Tsarist Russia, and more recently, and it opens up to include Europe, America, um, and, and all of us really. Um, Maria makes the point in the book that, of course, the Soviet experience and the trauma of Soviet life um, and the Holocaust um, is, is, of course, terrible. But actually, right around the world, people have suffered terrible, terrible traumas and genocides and famines and wars. So in many ways, uh, many millions of people are affected by impaired family histories, lost histories, um, histories which have been buried in migration and death. Um, and so it's a book that speaks to everybody. It's not just about Russia. Although if you're interested in Russian history, there is an awful lot of uh, Russia related um, information in it. It's a really beautiful book. Marie Stepanova is a poet first and foremost, and she brings to her prose a poet's awareness of language. It took me a year to translate this book because every line demanded 
the most um, extraordinary attention really. Every line demanded me to work both as a poet and prose translator in order to capture some of the lyrical beauty of what Maria is saying and also the philosophical and theoretical brilliance of her thinking. It's a book which changed my life and I hope it will change your life as readers too. Um, and I really hope most of all that you get some of the joy and excitement from it, from reading it, that I felt as I translated it. <laughs>